Hello everybody, I'm Randy Windscreen, Manufacturers.com. Hey, while you're here, like our videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have so much fun putting little how-to videos, informational videos, and of course, fun videos. So be sure to subscribe. Well, today we are going to show you exactly step-by-step -step, your how-to insect screen kit. Come on in a little bit closer. This is what your kit comes with. Now this one here in particular is the 36 inch by 36 inch, so you get your four tubes, or aluminum, I'm sorry, four exterior plastic corners, which incidentally uh, this one's a champagne color. You're going to get two slide in leaf springs, or tension springs. This is going to make it so much easier for replacing. You're going to get yourself two pull tabs that will easily go down into the track. You're also going to get a length of foam spline, and I'm going to specify that, foam spline. Some other kits use a rubbery base spline, and man, let me tell you, that is about as hard as it gets. You're also going to get a crossbar. Now, whether you decide to leave this crossbar in or not, which I encourage you not to, this is mostly for tension, so we do not hourglass our screen while we're putting it together. And then you're going to get your length of fiberglass insect screen, which incidentally, this is charcoal. And again, this is the 36 inch square kit. So you get a 36 inch square piece of the material. Now, once you have measured the width of your window and the height, always keep in mind, general rule is the width of the window is where you're going to put your springs at the top and your tabs at the bottom. So depending on yours, you could have a slider window. Of course, then your springs would be on the side. Uh, on one and side on the other but again use your thought and your imagination on that and it will easily come together now this particular window I've already cut is a 34 inch square window so I'm a right-handed guy so I'm gonna use my right hand and I'm gonna take these corners and they just slide right in there and they're very snug they're also very clean same color that way it looks flawless so I'm gonna do that to all four that I've already pre-cut whether you have a miter saw or just a handsaw, it doesn't matter, just take your time and you'll find that the aluminum should not splinter because we're not creating any angles, but instead we're creating boxed squared corners. So now that I've installed the corners, I'm just going to put my frame whoops, together. And again, this is the way we do it out here at our manufacturing facility, just because it's simple and just about everyone that works here is a righty. So that makes it simple and easy slide in using just basically our right here. We give a little tap and we have created a perfectly bug screen. Oh, I love it. All right, let me slide this out of the way. Now again, general rule of thumb on the crossbar, whichever is your widest dimension, whether it's the width or the height, use that crossbar for that dimension. And the reason is because the longer the run, the easier it's going to be to try to over tighten our material. So in this case, we, we know we have a full 34. My crossbar was designed to be used on the longest portion. So I just cut it to size. And again, your crossbar will come at 36 as well. And you'll be able to chop it down. And also on that, these corners are 3 quarter inch. So no matter what your dimensions are, just always remember an inch and a half is removed for the crossbar. All right, let me get that out of the way. Now one step I forgot. And I'm sorry, and I'm going to back this off, is I needed top springs. So I'm going to pull that back off. And again, like I showed you in the how-to, slide on leaf springs. I mean, come on, you can't make that any easier, I tell you. That's easier than making a bologna sandwich right there. There we go. And I'm going to do the same thing on the opposite side. Because again, this is the top of my frame. Nice and snug. Oh, I love how tight that is. That lets us know we're building a quality product. And then now I'll insert my pull tabs. You choose where. I'm just going to go about a couple of inches from the edge on both sides. And as you can see, the pull tab has a groove that allows that to lock in nice and beautiful over that frame so that you still get the spline in as you go. All right, and as you're looking at that, I'm going to grab my roller, which I left over here. All right, so our only other tools was, of course, a roller and a nice sharp blade. 
course, your rollers you'll find there down at your local hardware store. We are working on getting a roller that will come with our kits, but I don't know when. Um, we're working on it, so hopefully in the future. Now, much like solar screens, start with a straight edge, which for me would be over here on my left side of the table because I am a righty. If you keep your material straight, when you start rolling, you'll find a whole lot easier to prevent wrinkles. So, take my foam spline, and I slid it down into the groove, and then I just use this to force it down. Now what I'm gonna use is my left hand just rub, not too tightly, but I'm gonna drag against this material while I push in my foam spline. And the reason I'm pulling while I push it in is I'm gonna prevent any kind of wrinkles or folding over on itself. So I'm gonna do the bottom. So by that, I'm just giving a little twist to the corner. Much like the beginning, I'm just gonna work it in there, get it over that pull tab. And same idea, drag your hand across till you get down to the end. And again, I'm gonna spin my frame. And this is where the crossbar comes in handy. Um, this is something you paid extra for if you bought it somewhere else, but with us, it's a standard in our kit. And again, I've already made it a perfect width of my frame. So now I'll just twist my corner again, much like I did on the other two. And again, I'm gonna drag that hand just slightly on the material. We don't wanna over tighten it, nor do we wanna under tighten it. As you can see, nice and beautiful. Crack that center bar out. Now, incidentally, I'm lucky on this one because this bar is actually, or this window screen, excuse me, that I'm building for you is the same width as it is the height. And I know that's probably never gonna happen for you at home. I got lucky on this order. But, so I'm able to use my crossbar twice. So now let's finish. And same idea, we're gonna drag that material slightly with our hands, just to get some tension, not too much. Then we get down to the end. Take our nice sharp razor blade, and trim away the excess. And right here I can see where I have a little fold over and just back out a little bit. Boom, just like that. Absolutely beautiful. I'll go ahead and get rid of my temporary crossbar. You can keep that, use it for something else or put it in a recycle bin because it is 100% made in America aluminum. Now it's time to trim our edges. What I like to do and what I always teach my guys is just set that blade right on top of the foam spline, push it into the aluminum and then just walk it. And this may take you a few minutes the first time, but the more you do it, I guarantee the faster you will get. As we went through these like crazy. Same idea. And then I always lift it to trim up under. So again, we're just pulling it. We're resting that blade on our spline. So I gave that spline a little bit of a haircut too. <laughs> says, no, 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 don't cut my hair off. There we go. Oops, my hair is there. And there we go. We have a perfect, 100% guaranteed replacement insect screen. And that took us less than one minute. Obviously, I went a little bit slower in the video for a step-by-step -step feel. Replacement insect screen. Ready to go. 100% made in America. The way we like it. Windscreenmanufacturers.com. Order yours today.